Hello and welcome. I like to make this quick um, reasoning with a lot of people that are watching. I really hope um, somebody may get close to this um, video and make some sense out of it because it suddenly occurred to me that when we are making criticism, some people feel we hate the Igbos or we hate Namdekanu or we hate Biafra or we hate anybody. The truth is that we don't really hate anybody. We don't hate the Igbos. For one, before I can say, well, I don't hate Namdekanu, but I don't hate him as a person, but I certainly do dislike his method. Now, one thing you should know when when I came into this struggle, because of the advantage I have living in the north, I had greater perspectives understanding the political strength of the Hausa man. And the political strength of the Hausa man is simple. They call it here in Hausa parlance, they call it Tarwandengi. That means when people come together and gather their strength for a single purpose. So in Hausa land, they call it Tarwandengi. Now, everything the Hausa man has been doing to us in Nigeria, we have given them the opportunity uh, to, to do it. I'm Mr. I am Abel Chinedu. I may have to take you off from this group. You see, you just wrote here that I wish uh, Namdi Kano will be deleted from your mouth as you promised. Let me tell you the truth. Whether you believe it or not, Namdi Kano has done a lot of damage. You may love him because he's your fellow tribesman, because of your ethnic sentiments. Whether you like it or not, Namdi Kano has become more of a, in fact, the, the, the damage he has done now, it will take only God to solve it. So if you think telling the truth and uh, making reference to Nam Kanu who is going to upset you, you better leave this group and get the hell out. We have no time for, 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 for sentiments here. When I, joined, when I joined the whole idea of trying to say what is good for our struggle, I, uh, I had a clear understanding of the, of the Aosa man. Do you know, Mr. Chinedu, that when the Fulani man hears you talking about Biafra, hears you talking about freedom, hears you talking about leaving Nigeria, they just go to sleep. They don't bother. I have friends here who tell me that they don't bother. What it means, anytime we hear this Igbo people talking about their Biafra, we don't get bothered. We just go to sleep. I've never understood that statement until until more recently when I saw how uh, when I saw how how you people are going about it. In all honesty, the way Nam Kanu is going about this struggle will never fetch any Biafra because there is there are propaganda. The, 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 in fact, there's, there's lack of tact. There's, there's lack of strategy. To the, I said, I called, a, an IPOB member called me when. In case you don't know Mr. Chinedu, I joined IPOB. I took the oath. And I said, they talk about betray. I said, okay, this betray thing is two ways. What if you betray me? I am the one who IPOB has betrayed. Because my, my, my hope of going into into the into the i don't like calling it struggle because this the word struggle is a negative is a negative word when you say you struggle to pass your exam that means that means the end result is not encouraging you struggle to swim across the river that means it's when you so the word struggle means is is unachievable it's a negative connotation so i prefer to use fight for freedom you get me the, the, the whole IPOB, there's no strategy, there is no coercion. Even if there's no strategy, let me, there's nothing, as, as nothing. So why some of you who follow 
this Nam Dikanu are unable to see the fact that this whole thing is now a joke, still beats my imagination. Take a good look at me. For me to bring down a page of 45,000 followers, it should tell you that I am not interested in popularity. I am not interested in popularity. I've never been interested in popularity. I don't need popularity because it's not about popularity. The other day Nam Dikanu is talking, he said his page has 450,000 followers. It's not, let's, let's forget about ourselves. It's not about, you see, when people get, the problem with Nam Dikanu is that he got, he got to a place where he couldn't ma manage the sudden realization that he could say things and everybody would follow. He couldn't manage it. He couldn't manage the kind of popularity. He couldn't manage the kind of subservience he was getting from his followers. I also found me a leader, leader. I told them, stop calling me a leader. I am not here for leadership. The fact that you are an activist does not automatically make you a leader. You might have the gift of oratory. Does not make does not automatically make you to have the gift of, of leadership. Inam Dikanu was an MC before. That's why he's very good of uh, in, 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 in broadcasting. I, they said, go and listen to him, go and listen to him. So one day I took time to say, okay, let me listen to him. Let me tell you something. If it is not an interactive radio session and you are talking, talking for three good hours, do you know what it means to talk, Mr. Achebe? Ask yourself, you are talking, just, just discuss on a topic. Let's say you want to talk on parental upbringing. You cannot talk for three hours and be talking on parental upbringing. If I told you I'm going to talk about sense, that's creative analogy. Highest 10, 20 minutes, at most 30 minutes, your brain is already beginning to, you know, um, uh, wane down. For you to be able to talk that you are preaching or you are analyzing for three hours, it means you've been, you, are, you, are, you are adding a lot of rubbish. So I decided to listen to what is it? What does it say? You're going to bring the zoo down. How will you bring the zoo down? You're going to bring Nigeria down. You're going to bring how will you bring Nigeria down? Biafra, somebody called me and said uh, Biafra is going to come at the end of the year. I asked him, I agree with you. I want this Biafra to come. Can you please tell me how it will come? Uh, uh, if uh, Donald Trump win, we are waiting for Donald Trump to win election. Can you imagine that? Uh, when we do referendum, I pick it. No, 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 no strategy. That is that strategy. So if you want to know, I'm going to tell you what a good strategy looks like. I'm going to, after the, at the, by the end of this, I'll tell you what a good strategy is like. You get me? So I just see when you, you are always talking, you are talking about the history. You're talking about history, how Igbos were killed, how Igbos were killed. This, this young person, 18, 19, 20, 25, 30. If you are going to carry them to history, tell them everything. Don't take the part of history that makes them become emotional. Because he knows that every Igbo man, hears, when he hears the word Biafra, he becomes emotional. And all, all he needs to do is just to pump that emotion, increase the level of the emotion, and then when they become emotional, you can feed them anything. When you begin to tell them history, if you must I go to history, tell them everything about history. That's why I said there's no point for you to go to history because if the Igbos want to go to history and believe there's something that pains them, me as an robo man, there is something too. If I go to history, I also have things that I will also remember that will pain me. I was asking somebody, I said, during the Civil War that Nam Dikanu and Simon Nepa like visiting during the Civil War, was it only the Nigerian soldiers that held gone? Didn't Biafra soldiers hold gun? If they held gun, who are they shooting at? Did they keep people? If they keep people, who are they killing? Do you know that in the Civil War, the Fulani man never partook? If you are reading the history of the Civil War, you will never hear names like Abu Bakr or uh, Usman or Shekaru or anything. It's only Yoruba, Middle Belt, and South. And who were those that suffered the suffered more from the bullet of the Igbo man? They were it was their neighbors, the immediate neighbors, Delta, Calabar, Edo. We suffered it. In this country, in case you don't know, there was a time 
what Fulani is doing by occupying everywhere. The Igbos did it. In case you don't know, the Igbos did it by putting their brothers in every every uh, every head of all parastatas. So if so, what I'm saying now, going to history, because we all have bitterness that that is in history. So if we all choose to be going to history, we will not solve the problem. So it, I'm not saying we should not educate our young one about history, but if you must tell them about history, tell them everything. Black and white. So let them now make the choice of what to decide upon what they've heard. But don't tell them that they killed the boy, they killed the boy, they starved the boy, they marginalized the boy, they marginalized the boy. Just give them one side of the story. But that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video, I brought down my page and my heart has been eating me up. My, my heart has been eating me up because how would I say I'm not doing again when I have so much to offer, so much to tell. But the truth is that before I came in, Inamdi Kanu, let me tell you the strategy of Inamdi Kanu. A lot of Igbo boys don't mostly don't finish school because they know that you really don't need education to be rich. You have a culture where if you have money, you have respect. So a lot of them don't don't go don't go to school, higher secondary school, maybe diploma, and they go into business. And God has blessed them to be always successful in business. So when Namdi Kanu comes and he begins to tell them about history, mind you, these are 18, 20, 25, 30 year old boys, those who have not born during the Civil War and they don't know anything about it. Of course, they become emotional. Now these are people starved of a leadership, of a leadership mentor. Now they find that missing link in Inamdi Kanu, and they are following. Now somebody who comes in and is telling you to hate your elders or Haneze, is telling you to hate your politicians, is telling you to hate your elders, is telling you to hate your politicians, is telling you to hate other activists. Is telling you to hate Christianity. What he is trying to do is to make sure that he knocks out every opposition and the only voice they will hear is his own. That to me is a clear definition of autocracy. It's a clear definition of a, a one-man gang. Remember in school they taught us that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. When you begin to refer to somebody as supreme leader, to be a supreme leader means that he is above the constitution, he is above the country, he, he, you, you cannot sue him, you cannot take him to court. If he takes your wife and rape your wife, you cannot do anything to him. That is the implication of referring to somebody as supreme leader. Now, some will argue that ah, the man said he's not going to be the leader of the new Biafra. You have, not said, you, know, you have not said anything different because indeed the supreme leader is mostly not the president. It's not the head of state. He appoints the head of state. The head of state belongs to him. The country belongs to him. You understand me? So when somebody begins to tell that there are three strategies he has, he's going to tell you two and he keep one to himself. What kind of strategy is that? If I'm going to, if you are boarding a bus, if you are boarding an Onisha, uh, if, you are, if you are taking a vehicle to Onisha and... Uh, Driver is only is the only one who knows where he's driving the bus to. Will you follow that car? He's telling you he's the only one who knows where the bus is going, and he's the only one who knows how the bus will get to Lagos. Will you follow that bus? So it, it, it's funny the way I, I understand some of you love Namdi Kanu. I understand the depth at which you love him, but you see, he's a human being. You understand me? It, 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 it's okay to understand that you love him so much and you lack the ability to see how wrong he is. But the truth is that he's, he has done wrong. He has missed it all completely. In fact, to, to even imagine a Biafra of Namdi Kanu is a total chaos. It's going to be a total chaos. You have an you, know, you have a Namdi Kanu's Biafra that says he can't go and talk to the Riverine area. They can't go and pamper us. We should just go and join. As an robo man, I can't just join you like that. How will I join you just like that? 
I just join you like that. I don't know how we are going to stay. There is no clear. Uh, the Nambi Kanu said when they in the new Biafra, uh, the coastal region, everybody will control their wealth. Why must it be Nambi Kanu said? Why not the people said? All I want is a situation whereby we first. Okay, now let let me go straight to my own solution because people keep asking, "What is your own solution?" You keep blaming Nambi Kanu. What is your own solution? Let me first tell you my solution. In school, they taught us that to solve a problem, uh, to solve a problem, you must first identify what is wrong. What is wrong with us is that first and foremost, we have a psychology that is completely disoriented. We have a psychology where the Igbo man sees his, 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 other, uh, his other neighbors as if they are minority or inferior to him. Let's say these things the way they are. Baro, come and open the door. We have a psychology that 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 tells us that some people believe. Look, in Igbo land, you are still practicing. You are still practicing slavery. When you talk about Usu, the Usu tribe, eh? When you talk about the Usu tribe, it even within you, you are you, you have you are talking about being treated as minority in nigeria but you yourself in your own in your own environment in your own space there are people you consider inferior to yourself that is just within Igbos alone imagine if you now see other people that you already consider by virtue of their population you believe that they are, they are less than you so we still have a long way to go to tell people that look the fact that in africa when you have hold, hold on a second um what is this now the fact that you are in Africa and your pop your ethnic population is more than another population does not necessarily make it seem that you are more important than those you perceive as lesser in population. So when you have people saying that we can't go and pamper them, it is already a red flag to show that these people, if we go, if we if we go to a country with them, they will see us as insignificant. When even before we got the Biafra, you're already finding it difficult to sit with us and discuss how we go. you're already seeing it that if you come to us, it's perhaps bringing yourself down. Look, let me tell you the truth. I must say something. Look, I love the Igbo man. My younger sister, same father, same mother, is married to an Igbo man and they have five children, five kids. So I don't have anything against an Igbo man. But it, we, we, we must say the truth the way it is. We must say the truth the way it is. The problem we have is the is the arrogance of the Igbo man. And Namdi Kanu and his IPOB miscreants have come have ha, 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 um, if uh, Namdi Kanu and his IPOB miscreants has exemplified that fear. You get me? Ha, ha, has exemplified that fear. Let me tell you that you are saying how many times Fulani contacted Rubo before laying pipes to Canada. Let me tell you, we now know you that uh, MNK Ifani, Fulani now, they are doing their trusty because they have the power and the gun. Have we seen what the Igbos will do if we give them power and gun? Because the, 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 the houses now we are seeing their own evil part because they have the power and the gun. So we are seeing their evil. You too, if they give you, that's, I'm talking about the robots, the joy, anything. If they give you gun and power, we don't know the type of evil you will, you will emanate from. Right now, because you don't have the power and the, you don't have the power and the gun, so forth, we don't know the type of evil you have. But even at that, I'm, I'm in particular with IPOB, they have no gun, they have no power yet, but look at what they are doing. Somebody will just sit in his house and say they should stone somebody to death. That is that that is somebody that has not gotten power and he has not gotten the guns. He's already commanding somebody to be stoned to death. Imagine if you now give such a person power and has gun. He will not even that means he will not even uh, in fact they will just he will just snap a finger and they just eliminate you. So the, the truth is that forget Fulani, we've known their evil. We, we, we've seen their own evil way. What about you? The telltale sign we are seeing now does not encourage anybody to believe that living with you is going to be peaceful. You see, 
The wrongest thing you, you always think is that when we get Biafra, it will be peaceful, peace will be that. As, as Igbo people right now, you have no record of, of leadership. Look at your governors. And look at Inam Dikanu. As much as I dislike Inam Dikanu ways, it pays me to tell this truth. Inam Dikanu had one of the biggest opportunity any activist or any human being can ever had. Providence created an opportunity for him to become so popular. But what, what did he do with it? Supreme leader, holy, holy, savior, this, that, eh, command and control. When you use the word command and control, it is not French you spoke, oh. it is not Fulani you spoke, it is English. You can go to a dictionary and see what is the meaning of command and control. Command means, command and control, it means you should go and follow hierarchy. When you establish a system of command and control where you have a supreme leader at the top, what are you saying? That is autocracy. That is that is that is that is dictatorial system. You have a system whereby we've not gotten the Biafra. Nobody can talk. Anybody who comes to talk is sab a saboteur. Anybody who comes to talk is a traitor. Anybody who comes to talk, you threaten him. We've not gotten the, the, the Biafra and look at what we are doing. So the science clearly shows that the Biafra is not at least at least not Nam the Kanu's Biafra. Right now, as it is, the word that word Biafra is not even sellable again. I came to this scene trying to, you know, bridge some sort of union between Igbos and their neighbors. But while I, while I was doing it, Nam the Kanu was busy telling everybody directly on the radar, look. My people, the South South, so South South cannot be with the the cannot be with at least Nam the type Nam the Kanu's type of Biafra. You Ibos, you are good people, you are very, very good people. I won't have I've met some fantastic, fantastically good Igbo people, very, very nice people, very liberal Igbo people with, with, with brain, but their numbers are few. Nam the Kanu has 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 uh, yes, he has large followers, but what have they been doing? They've used internet to tell the whole world that we are rascals, we are violent, we are we can attack any elders and beat him up. We can uh, we can we can we can say somebody should be caught and stoned to death. That is not that is not what I that that is not uh, 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 without power or guns, Igbos have conquered the world. You see. You see, this is a, a many K fine. You see the type of arrogance that makes it impossible for people to trust you, Igbos. Without power, okay, that's without power and guns. Igbos have conquered the world. That means if you now add guns and power to how you have conquered the world, and that means we are all gone. Let me tell you the truth. I will say this without fear or favor. As much as I believe, and let me tell you, I go to beer parlor. I, I take I take beer. I, I go to beer parlor most time because... That is where you see the truth, the see the nature of life. Where I believe the Igbo man is good. If you go to a beer parlor and you see three Igbo men drinking beer, and you are a non-Igbo, if you drag a chair, say you want to sit with them, they will be so happy. In fact, you might not even buy the beer, they will buy the beer for you. That's how good they are. But the Yorubas, they may not be, they may not be welcoming that you came to sit with them to drink beer. So are the outside. So Igbos are nice. But you see this arrogance. This is your arrogance when you talk. You don't even think before you talk. Without a many K fine, without power or guns, Igbos have conquered the world. You use the word conquered. So do you want me now to be in the same country with you when in your mind you believe you have conquered the world? And the world includes me because I'm part of the world. So to you now, I represent somebody you have conquered. You are, you are, you are a very stupid man. <laughs> eh? You say it's, um, you are, you are just, it's just so unfortunate. It's so it's so unfortunate. To me, eh, on now has come in again. Omen Boji Nwaze, you are making noise like your fully supreme leader. In fact, the fact that we are so good at abusing ourselves, why 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 in the world are we talking about a country? Look at our look at our emotions. With this type of emotion, if we go into any country, in fact, the next day we start killing ourselves. Left to me, we are not even ready. We should stop talking about this Biafra. We are not. We are not ready. We are too. We are not ready. We are not just. We are just not ready. 
You want to come Biafra when you every a slightest provocation, foolish man, a slight provocation, idiot. As well as your for a year, man, eh, we have conquered the world. If I am many after this broadcast, be sure that I'm removing for this group. Your type is not fit here at all. Eh? They try and find out what makes Igbo man unique. Even Britain are afraid of Biafra. You see your arrogance. You, I like the fact that you are here. You are speaking exactly why people dislike Igbo man. Your arrogance. You think too much about yourself. You believe God has made you better than everybody. And we see it. You, you either you sometimes you say it sometimes in your comment. So if you think uh, 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 the God has made you Igbos above everybody, then go on your own. Stop looking for others. You God, God has made you so so good so everything. Yet a Fulani man, an illiterate, the illiterate Fulani would would tell you will come and kill your people and you would not do anything. You, you, you talk anyhow. MNK fine. You talk anyhow. If not because I know the, I, have, I, I know some very good Igbo people that there are things I will say you will not like it. Eh? Every we are afraid of Igbos. If you are afraid of them, you are not alone. You, 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 you speak too much about self. So it, it, it's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's really, really unfortunate that the greatest problem of the Igbo man is the Igbo man himself and is his mouth. His mouth. The Fulani man will never come and talk his plan. He will never come and say what he's doing. You only know what he has his plan when he has started executing it. The other man does not work. All he waits is for month end subvention. He will come to our place and pick our, our phone. We are here. Somebody is here trying to prove to me why Igbo man is, 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 is a conqueror. Igbo people have conquered the world. Hey, okay. So your plan is to conquer the world. So when we get the Biafra now, you conquer us. You, you, you just, you talk anyhow. You just, you talk anyhow. You talk, a full animal will keep a plan in his heart for 100 years. He will not say it until he executes it. But you, you're, you thank God you're I, I am happy. So it is a fun thing. So the solution is this. If at all there's going to be a solution, we must start a process of orienting people like Emenike. That arrogance you that makes you feel that Igbos are, have conquered the world. If you believe Igbos have conquered the world, what then makes you different from the full animal who also think that they want to conquer Nigeria? Your own is world you have conquered though. If full animal is just Nigeria they want to conquer. So which, which, whose agenda is bigger? The one that wants to conquer the world and the one that wants to conquer Nigeria. So it's unfortunate that we are not just, it pains me, oh, it pains that I wasted five years trying to bridge a gap or trying to build a bridge that, that would not even hold a bicycle, talk less of a, 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 a trailer. You talk anyhow. Ah, Igbos have conquered the world. Uh -huh, okay, if you have conquered the world, then we'll leave you. We are trying to see how we'll come down because I believe in my heart and I'm saying it again. As Igbos alone, we cannot conquer Fulanis. As uh, Urobos alone, we cannot conquer Fulani. As Edos alone, we cannot conquer Fulani. As Ijos alone, we cannot conquer Fulani. The only chance we have is if we come together. We may not necessarily like ourselves, but we can be friends with benefits. We can be friends with benefits. As an Igbo man, you must first identify your problem. Do you know how many Igbos are living outside Igbo land? And do you know what it means if, they, if, if we get Biafra and, and every Igbo across the world begins to come out, come back to Nigeria? Do you know what, it, what, what, what the scenario will look like? To give you an example, on Christmas when every Igbo goes back to the village, how does it look like in the village when all Igbos come to the village? Is it not a crowd? So when we have this Biafra now and everybody starts coming home and they find out that land is an issue, you begin to find a way to expand into other people's territory. Which is the same thing the Fulani is doing. So we, must, we, we that is why we say, okay, before we, let's sit down and talk. You say, no, we should not talk, we should just join. That, that, that theory is very, very bad. So even though we can't come together, except we continue to hammer on these pains and differences, the, and, 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 and it begins to be, it begins to be reasons why we will not come together. And because of that, the Fulani will continue to, 
uh, 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 this is, I don't know if that's somebody, I don't know how to, okay, you understand me? If you want to call in, please, uh, I don't know how to, if just try and call me. So, the basic truth here is this. If we must come together, the evil man must first, first bring down his arrogance, because that is the core of the problem. To run South, South, and South, Southern, that is, that is the core of the problem. The arrogance with which some of you speak, like the, like the man that just said that uh, Igbos have conquered the world. So if you have conquered the world, I can't be conquered. You don't, you don't want to be conquered by Fulani. What makes me think, what makes you think I want to be conquered by an Igbo man? When you come to my wall, I'm right. Don't be, immediately after I'm, I'm pulling you off this group. I don't want your type. Who, who talk anyhow without reason, reasoning? Nonsense. Nonsense. I've seen, if not, I've seen very, very good Igbo people. Extremely good Igbo people. I've, I've benefited from Igbo people. In fact, Igbos are so nice. Very, very nice people. But there are few. The lousy ones are the ones that are making noise, just, just destroying the good image of Igbo people. Lousy one, hey, hey, useless man, a fool, a fool, slave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, engage them in meaningful discussion. Okay, I want to be, I want to be part of Biafra. Please tell me how this Biafra will work uh, so that, ah, uh, no, just join. Nam Dikano has said, Nam Dikano has said. So all you know is Nam Dikano has said. You don't even have an idea for your own self how this thing work. It's what Nam Dikano have said. One guy told me that before this year, Biafra will come. Before this year, your, your, your foolishness has really become chronic. Does, does, this, is, uh, this is July. Uh, August, September, October, November. That's another five months. So you truly believe in another five months, Biafra will come. Please don't make me laugh. See, uh, to wrap up this video, I didn't make this video with 20 pounds after the uh, Igbos have succeeded in buying up Nigeria. You see? And later you say, this is many K, in case you don't know, I've spoken with him on phone. No? It's not an outside man posing like an Igbo man. It's, this one is a typical Igbo man because I know him, I've spoken with him. You can, you can see the mindset from where he's coming from. With 20 pounds after the war, Igbos have succeeded in buying up Nigeria. I, I thought about this thing yesterday. I said, whereas Fulanis are having the agenda of catching Nigeria through the sword. Igbos are also having the same agenda of catching Nigeria through the cash. Because when you go everywhere, they are buying the shop. I don't have anything with Igbo man buying shop. I don't have anything. If you have the money, buy. After all, if I go to Sokoto, if I have the money to buy shop, nobody will prevent me from buying. But for you now to be coming on air, to be bragging that you have bought up Nigeria, you have conquered the world, let me tell you, you are the same thing like the Fulani man, and we will watch you and we'll trim you down. You get me? People like you are now destroying whatever love or affection that Igbos will naturally have with this kind of stupid talk. It's, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. But let me just try. If we must, if we must get this Biafra that we must talking about. The Igbo man must show the ability that they can be humble. Period. Nothing more. And when we begin to see that humility, then there's a chance that we might say, okay, let's work with this. Because you cannot be exuding so much arrogance. And then we, we come and follow you. It is only, it's like consciously walking into, in, 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 into a death trap. You cannot be exuding this kind of arrogance and, and expect we, Sasa, to come and follow you. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not funny. If you, if you have succeeded, uh, if you have succeeded, keep it to yourself. In the place I go to relax, there's a guy there that drives a 29 million naira car. He will come into the bar quietly. He will leave the bar quietly. He will come into the bar quietly and leave the bar quietly. No, it's an animal man. The, the whole world must know that he's a big boy. He has come to drink. That, that is, it, it don't, I don't know. I, 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 lead, I don't know. So there's so much to fix. Before we start talking about Biafra, we need to fix this thing here, this psychology. There's so much wrong about it. If we carry the same psychology we have, 
that one one guy is saying that they've conquered the world with 20 billion the Igbos have conquered they've buy, they've bought up nigeria it is that very thing that is making us afraid of you the I, the fact that i'm happy you are talking keep talking because you are, you are making me you are getting you're giving more information yeah. forget this every state you don't try to mnk you are trying to repair what you have you, you have already said your first mind so don't repair it you said Igbos will buy up nigeria so I, that one is registered. So now that they're trying to say every state in Biafra land will control its resources, let me tell you, we robots, we are not interested in your Biafra. We are not interested in this, your kind of Biafra. We are not interested. Carry your five states and go. Don't come and be talking anyhow. You think I'm afraid, you think we're afraid of you? If you cannot be humble enough to put yourself in a humble situation, we are not interested. We cannot be in the same country with people who don't have humility. People who can say, uh, if an elder does wrong, you, you go and beat him up. You go and beat a serving senator. You pull his clothes in public. Say you want to discipline him. I'll be marginalized. And you beat up your this thing. Do not blame your leaders. Blame the system that produces those leaders. The system that produces those leaders is what you should blame. Your, your socket, you, you plug socket on the wall. It's burning. And you change the socket. You put the socket, it burns again. You put the socket, it's burned. Don't you know that the problem is not the socket? The problem is the current, the source of the current that is burning the socket. So you have leaders that are not that are not leading very well. You have a system where you don't have kings. If you have a king, like in the north here, a king can call Dangote. The, they're not, not even the so Sudan or Sokoto. The king of Dangote's village will call Dangote, come on to see you because there's a complaint about you. Dangote, wherever he is in the world, will fly to Nigeria and go to. And when he goes, he will see. He will kneel down. Yeah. And then they will talk to him, say, Kai Malam, I'm thinking whether one chief in your village can call out and say, come here, I want to talk to you. He will abuse him. It's unfortunate. So if you have a system of kings and your leaders are misbehaving, your king cannot call the leader and say, come, this thing you are doing, stop it, I don't like it. And he will stop. But everybody is a master of himself. Everybody is king of himself. Everybody is doing his own thing the way he wants. How do you expect order? How do you expect all that? The only time we, we um, the only time on record that an Igbo man, uh, Igbos were given the opportunity to become Senate president. What, what happened? Five senators in one tenor. Five. Why? Because everybody, the senator should have come from Anambra. The senator should have come from Mbaise. The senator should have come from Imo. At the end of the day, we were, when you go to NTA in those days, it's, it's, it's entertainment. People are uh, Chika, uh, Chika, Chika or Kadibo running with mace. Just entertainment. TV man has been, uh, what's the, uh, uh, David Mack, has been sending present for eight years. No people coming to fight that it should have been Doma, it should have been this, it should have been that. Bukola Saraki has been sending present. No one said no, it should have come from Ogun State. No, it should have been Lagos State. No, it should have, nothing. Now this man is there. No, not in peace. For your own, ah, no, hey, your chica, bios, and you, bios, everybody. So, do not blame the leaders. Blame the system that produced the leaders. And the system is you don't have king. Don't say Igbos don't worship anybody. That is the very problem you have. Every society must have the idea of king. To say you have king is to, to tell the world that a king is a custodian of your heritage. A king is a custodian of your history. A king is a custodian of your good virtue. A king is... Is is a melting point that that rounds everybody up. When you say you don't worship anything, that is also saying that we are so proud we cannot be controlled by anybody. And since you've not been controlled by anybody, why are you complaining? Because you are a scattered people. A king is one that brings people together. When you don't have a king, you don't come and brag. You don't have a king. It is because you don't have a king. Okay, let me give you an example. If today they said, okay. We want to discuss and solve all of the problems. All those that have been aggrieved, we want, to, we want to solve them. Let every tribe bring one person that will speak on behalf of that tribe. 
to choose who will speak on our behalf. It did not take the Yorubas three hours to choose who will speak on behalf of the Yorubas. It did not take the houses three hours to choose who will speak on behalf of the houses. But I tell you that we'll spend the next six or seven months waiting for the Igbos to bring who will speak on behalf of Igbos. So you see, the problem is not the leaders. The problem is the system that produces the leader because everybody wants to be king. Because you don't have kings, that is why everybody wants to be king. But if you have king, you have somebody that can rally everybody together and coordinate and say, okay, no, this thing should not be like this. It's Igwe. Ah, no, this is not that. Igwe. But when somebody is bigger than everybody, everybody is, you, you become scattered. I am not here to attack people's culture. But to be very frank, Igbos are the most populous tribe in the East. And therefore, the onus is on them to rally everybody together. But they are telling you that you are nothing, like the, in many cases saying now, that uh, they, 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 they are going to buy up Nigeria and they've conquered the world. A mind like that, to me, is the same mentality that drives the Fulani man. Let's not hide it. This, the, the, the man that tells me that uh, Igbos have conquered the world and they are buying up Nigeria, it is the same psychology that drives the Fulani man to own Nigeria. So to me, the Fulani man, if we have people like Emenike talking like this, it means the Fulani man and the Igbo man, they are the same thing. And the only reason why maybe perhaps the Igbo man is crying because they've not had the gun and the power. Maybe they have gun and power, they'll do worse than what Fulani is doing. Can you tell me that you have conquered the world and you are going, you buy, buy up Nigeria? It is your type that sees us from the coastal region. You look us like nothing. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Bye.